the Wind Pay Fantasy Novels series. Coiling Dragon also known as Pan Long, by I.E. Tomatoes. Please support the author by buying the original book on the link below. Book 17 Indigo Prefecture, Chapter 49, Three Months After Kestrel finished speaking, the entire hall immediately fell silent. Linley was frantically pondering. Although the teacher of this Kestrel is in Indigo Prefecture, the distance is too far. I don't have enough time right now. If we make a round trip, there definitely won't be enough time. Can it be that I'll have to send Dealey over there? If they sent Dealey over, the amount of time it would take would definitely be much shorter. But if they did that, then there wouldn't be enough time to find anyone else who might also be able to save her. Kestrel. Linley stared at him. Tell me. If I send Delia to your teacher's place, how likely is it that your teacher will be able to save Delia? Kestrel frowned. Hesitating momentarily, he stared at Linley then said with certainty, if my teacher intervenes, although I can't say he will definitely be successful, he has at least a 90% chance of success. 90%? Linley turned, looking at the unconscious Delia. Linley then turned his head to look at Patriarch Gislason. Patriarch, I have no other options. I'll have to send Delia to Mr. Alphonsus. Gislason was frowning, and he slowly shook his head. Linley, don't be impatient. There's another way. Another way? Linley was stunned. Elder brother. That cold, arrogant-looking patriarch of the White Tiger Clan spoke out. How about this? I'll personally pay a visit and bring that Alphonsus over. A round trip for a seven-star fiend would normally take half a year, but if I go dot the total time of the trip, including bringing Alphonsus back, will be just three months. Linley couldn't help but feel a surge of joy. In the Four Divine Beasts Clan, the White Tiger Clan was that of a wind-type divine beast. In terms of speed, the White Tiger Patriarch was definitely the fastest expert of the four divine beasts clan, and was far faster than most seven-star fiends. No need. Gislason shook his head. Patriarch, Linley said frantically. Gislason laughed calmly. Linley, don't worry. I just used my divine sense to give the order to an intelligence agent of our four divine beasts clan to inform the Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture. Regarding your situation dot and soon, we'll have an answer. Linley was astonished. In fact, everyone in the hall was astonished. The Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture was getting involved. Linley. Fuzzro walked over slapping Linley on the shoulders and laughing, don't worry. The forces of the Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture are spread throughout the entire Indigo Prefecture. If he were to reach out to Alphonsus, it would be done very quickly. And perhaps the Lord Prefect even knows some other experts who can save Delia. Linley's eyes couldn't help but to light up. The Lord Prefect, as the Lord of Indigo Prefecture, had a level of influence in Indigo Prefecture that vastly surpassed the Four Divine Beasts clan. It must be understood that even the Eight Great Clans dared not invade the Skyrite Mountains, all because of the Lord Prefect. One could imagine how powerful the Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture was. Will the Lord Prefect be willing to help me? Linley was rather nervous as well. After all, he was neither friend nor family to this person. Don't be impatient. Wait a while. Our intelligence agents will soon send an answer. Gislason laughed, and Linley nodded. All he could do was swallow his impatience, burying it in his heart as he quietly waited. Moments later. We have a response. Gislason's smile became brilliant. 
Clearly, the intelligence agent had communicated with him through divine sense. Everyone in the main hall immediately looked towards Gislason. Ha ha, good news, Linley. The Lord Prefect has spoken. Gislason laughed as he looked towards Linley, extremely happy. Alphonsus is one of his friends, and in two or three days, his subordinates will reach and notify Alphonsus, who should be able to arrive here within three months. Linley felt relieved. Not just that. Gislason laughed. The Lord Prefect himself will come over as well. He says he will personally help treat Delia. Elder brother, the Lord Prefect is capable of treating the soul? The Grand Elder asked, rather astonished. I thought the Lord Prefect isn't very specialized with regards to treating the soul. The Grand Elder and the others clearly remembered the scene, that year, of the Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture intervening and stopping the eight great clans. That could be described as utterly terrifying. Precisely because of that event, even figures as exalted as Gislason would respectfully address him as Lord Prefect. After all, if it weren't for the Lord Prefect, their four divine beasts clan would most likely have been annihilated. Ha ha, I'm rather surprised as well. However, since the Lord Prefect has already spoken, he definitely won't fail to live up to his word. Gislason laughed as he looked towards Linley. Linley, now both Alphonsus and the Lord Prefect will come, one after the other. Don't worry. I truly didn't expect that the Lord Prefect would be so incredible with respect to treating the soul as well. The matriarch of the Vermilion Bird clan sighed in amazement as well. Linley felt a surge of excitement in his heart. Thank you, thank you all. Linley looked at everyone and spoke solemnly. Since it will be a long time before Mr. Alphonsus comes, I'll go back for now. All right. Gislason nodded and laughed. Linley, go back and get some rest. Don't worry too much. With the Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture himself intervening, given his ability and influence, he can easily invite quite a few people to come. Delia will definitely be successfully saved. Linley forced out a smile and nodded. And then, he let the Earth-type divine power swell from his body, which naturally formed a soft, cloud-like floating bed which Linley placed weight upon. And then, he took Delia into his arms, nodding towards the elders, and flew out of the main hall. All right. Everyone can go back now. Gislason said clearly. The four divine beast clans elders all bade farewell, and then flew away in small groups. Moments later, the only ones remaining in the main hall were Gislason and Fuzro. The two looked at each other. Gislason immediately set up his gore dream, separating the sound within from the outside world, then said urgently, Fuzro, last time we were discussing, Dash. Linley returned to that gorge within the Skyrite Mountains. He spent every day either by Delia's side or taking care of Wade. But of course, Linley would occasionally let some of the other members of the Yulon branch take care of Wade. A thin fog billowed about. Baruch was currently standing in an empty spot of land, staring towards Linley's distant abode. Father. Ryan walked over. Are you worried about Delia and Linley? Baruch let out a sigh. Right. Linley has already been back for half a month, but during this past half month, he's never dined with us. He's always remained within the room, hiding inside. In his eyes, the only person he can see right now, aside from Delia, is probably his son. Linley's sunken in too deeply. Ryan frowned. Love dot is very complicated. It's something which is hard to explain. Barat shook his head. Right at this moment, a figure descended from the skies at high speed. Clan leader Barat, how is my boss doing? The newcomer was Bibi. 
Bibi's group had arrived after Linley. Bibi? A hint of a smile appeared on Baruch's face. It's good that you've returned. Go speak with Linley. Even if you aren't able to persuade him to come out, if you can chat with him, perhaps Linley's mood will improvement. Right. Bibi nodded, then immediately ran over towards Linley's residence. Gislason's residence. The main hall. Patriarch, nearly a hundred of our clansmen are unconscious. What should we do? Tula said frantically. So many of our clansmen are sobbing. Tula's return had resulted in the return of a large group of unconscious clansmen as well. Gislason, frustrated, frowned as well. Enough of this subject. Gislason ground out. I know their situation well. They are just like Linley's wife. We aren't even able to save Linley's wife, how are we going to save anyone else? Tula's face was full of worry as well. Let the clansmen make their preparations. Gislason said. Fortunately, most of our clansmen have divine clones. But Linley's wife became a deity through fusing with a divine spark. She doesn't even have a clone. If she dies, she'll truly be finished. Tua nodded, letting out a sigh. He had personally watched as Delia was hit by the technique and saw how Linley had reacted. Most likely, in Linley's mind right now, his wife's life is more important than even his own. His wife is unfortunate as well, to have become a deity through fusing with a divine spark. Tula. Gislason instructed. These unconscious clansmen. You go make the arrangements. Most likely. Some of them fused with divine sparks as well. Yes, Patriarch. I'll make all the arrangements. Tula said. Fine. You can go now. Gislason said. After Tula left, Gislason's face became filled with exhaustion. To him, the matter of Delia and the other clansmen being unconscious was still a minor matter. What truly had him frustrated was the news which Fuzro had brought him. Can it be dot that there really is no hope? Gislason raised his head, closing his eyes. A glimmer of tears flashed from between his eyelashes, like a gleaming, brilliant little jewel. Gislason took a deep breath. The exhaustion disappeared from his face, and that resolute self-confidence once more appeared. Now. Gislason's eyes were hard and firm. All we can do is entrust our hopes to the Redbud Sovereign who stands behind Linley, as well as the Bloodrage Sovereign who stands behind the Lord Prefect. Unfortunately, the Lord Prefect isn't willing to go all out for our clan's sake. Otherwise, in the blink of an eye, three months passed. Why isn't he here yet? Linley stood outside his room, his head raised towards the skies. Ever since the three-month mark approached, he had been watching the skies every single day, hoping that Alphonsus would descend into the gorge. However, there had been no news of Alphonsus. Bibi walked out from behind, looking at Linley's back. Bibi felt miserable for Linley as well. He spoke. Boss, don't worry. He said three months, but that was just an estimate. It won't be exactly three months, but it shouldn't be too far off either. Most likely, Alphonsus will be here tomorrow. Linley turned to look at Bibi and nodded slightly. Right. He'll definitely arrive tomorrow. Linley. Linley. A frantic cry rang out from the air. Linley seemed to have been struck by lightning, and he immediately turned to look towards the skies, only to see a figure descending at high speed while saying excitedly, Linley, Mr. Alphonsus has arrived. He's arrived. Arrived? After having waited so long, Linley's heart seemed to have suddenly been set ablaze. All the hairs on his body stiffened, as though he had been hit by electricity. 
the newcomer was Elder Garvey. The Patriarch told me to notify you. Hurry and make your preparations. He is currently accompanying Mr. Alphonsus, and they will arrive soon. Elder Garvey's face was filled with delight. Linley, your wife will be saved. A look of joy was on Linley's face as well. Right. Delia will be saved. Linley turned and rushed into his room. Delia was quietly lying on a bed in the room, as though she were asleep. By Delia's side, there was a smaller bed, where Wade was quietly slumbering as well. Fortunately, by the time they had left Mia City, Wade was already able to eat liquid foods. Delia, Alphonsus is here. You'll definitely recover, Linley said softly. Boss, they're here. Bibi's voice rang out from outside. Linley hurriedly ran out, looking towards the skies. He saw that within the mist, more than ten blurry figures were flying over at high speed, and they soon landed on the ground. It was Gislason, the Vermilion Bird Matriarch, Kestrel, and a group of elders. There were two non-elders, one was Fuzro, while the other was a silver-haired old man with a ruddy complexion and with skin as tender as an infant's. He must be Alphonsus. Linley's eyes lit up. Linley, this person is Mr. Alphonsus. Gislason laughed, and the silver-haired, baby-faced old man laughed as well, nodding towards Linley. You are Linley, right? And your wife? Only now did Linley come to his senses, and he hurriedly said, Mr. Alphonsus, please follow me. He immediately led them in. The group entered the room. Mr. Alphonsus. Linley pointed towards his wife. Please help save my wife. I will try. Alphonsus smiled. He walked to the bed, standing there for a moment as he used his divine sense to investigate. His expression gradually grew solemn. This caused Linley's heart to clench. And then, Alphonsus reached out with his right hand, pressing it against the top of Delia's head. A blurry green L flowed out from Alphonsus' hand, encapsulating Delia's head. Immediately, the entire room fell completely silent, with no one daring to make a sound. Linley held his breath as well as he watched this scene. Since Alphonsus is acting, he definitely must have confidence in his ability to succeed. Book 17. Indigo Prefecture, Chapter 50, Between Life and Death. Within the room, everyone was watching Alphonse Street Delia. Linley was the most nervous of them all, and his forehead became matted with sweat. Linley, however, didn't even notice. Crackle. That green energy circulated, emanating a very faint sound. Alphonse, his face solemn, suddenly let out a low growl, and the speed at which the green light circulated suddenly increased dramatically, constantly pouring into Delia's brain. You, Delia, seemingly in pain, let out a soft sound, and her forehead creased slightly. This soft sound, to Linley, was like a clap of thunder. His eyes lit up as though he had been hit by lightning. Delia has regained consciousness. She's responding. Linley was so excited, his entire body was trembling. Looks of joy had appeared on everyone else's faces as well. Boss, Delia, is going to be saved. Bibi hurriedly said through divine sense with joy as well. Right. Linley nodded. He felt as though he were filled with life and energy. Gislason. Fuzro, and the others began to chortle as well. 
Linley continued to stare at Alphonsus as the man treated Delia, and the hope in his heart continued to swell. Delia, you absolutely must get better, you must. Right at this moment, Alphonsus took back his right hand, concluding the treatment. Mr. Alphonsus, is my wife treated? Linley asked hurriedly. Alphonsus turned to look at Linley. He could clearly see the hopes and expectations held within the eyes of this youth. However, Alphonsus just let out a soft sigh. Linley dot make your preparations. Preparations for what? What preparations? Linley immediately had a bad feeling. Mr. Alphonsus, what is going on? Gislason, whose face had been all smiles, hurriedly asked as his face changed as well. Alphonsus shook his head. All I can do is tell you quite openly. I am not able to save this woman. In addition, I recommend that you give up. To save this woman is virtually impossible. Hearing these words from Alphonsus, Linley felt his entire mind go blank. No. Linley suddenly growled, staring fixedly at Alphonsus, like a savage, maddened lion. Mr. Alphonsus, you must be lying to me. Just now, Delia had a reaction. She was conscious. How can you suddenly say that you can't treat her? Right. Didn't she improve just now? Gislason said as well. Seeing the savage, wild look on the face of the youth in front of him, Alphonsus let out a low sigh. Linley, just now, your wife didn't actually regain consciousness. Rather, while I was treating her, her soul pushed at mine strongly, causing a slight involuntary response in her body. But dot but didn't Kestrel say that you had a 90% chance of saving my wife? How can dot now? Linley couldn't accept this. He truly couldn't accept it. Three months ago, Linley had been convinced that Delia would definitely be cured. Over the past three months, Linley had been waiting constantly for this day. Just now, Linley had believed that Delia had already been cured. But now, Alphonsus let out a sigh. Three months ago, if I were to treat your wife, I would definitely have been able to save her. But now, it's too late. What do you mean? You could save her three months ago, but not now? Linley said frantically. Alphonsus looked around at everyone, then said, Everyone, this sort of spiritual attack is a very insidious, vile type. Those green spots of light invade the soul, then constantly devour and transform it. One spot becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight. Although the souls of Hyads are powerful, and to devour and transform them is very difficult. As the multiplicative effects continue, the more time passes, the more extravagant the rate of devouring becomes. Alphonsus said solemnly. Everyone present nodded. I know these things. But why are you unable to save Delia? Linley said frantically. Alphonsus looked at Linley, then sighed. Linley, you still don't understand? The devouring and transforming speed continues to grow faster and faster. Three months ago, the speed of devouring and transforming Dot was a million times slower than it is now. Linley was stunned. One becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight dot as time went on, after just a few dozen rounds, the numbers would become astronomically large. What I need to do in order to save your wife is to counter devour and counter transform those green spots of light, Alphonsus said. Linley knew this as well that the treatment method was to counter devour and reverse the transformation process. Only when my counter devouring speed surpasses the devouring speed will I be able to save your wife, Alphonsus said, and Linley completely understood. Right now, my treatment speed is far too slow, compared to the devouring speed. Even if I go all out, 
at most I'll be able to slow the devouring speed and slightly extend your wife's life. Alphonsus sighed. Three months ago, I could have easily saved your wife. But now dot forgive my inability. Linley stood there, stunned. He completely understood. This sort of devouring speed was like a spark of flame that had become a prairie fire. The more time passed, the wider the burned area would become. A single spark of fire was enough to char the entire grassland. The same was true for these green spots of light. The more time passed, the faster the devouring speed dot and the more distant the hopes for saving Delia would be. Boss. Boss. Bibi called out repeatedly. Linley. Fuzro called out as well. But Linley stood there like an idiot, completely silent. Alas! Alphonsus let out a sigh as well. Within the room, Gislason, the Vermilion Bird Patriarch, and the various elders all looked at each other, speechless. The entire atmosphere was extremely tense and gloomy. Mr. Alphonsus, Linley suddenly said frantically. I beg of you, please help treat my wife and extend her life. Let me have enough time to ask someone else to help treat her. Is that acceptable? Linley looked helpfully towards Alphonsus. Linley understood that Alphonsus' treatment speed was inferior to the devouring speed. Then dot if Alphonsus wanted to extend Delia's life, he would have to constantly treat her. This request of his was indeed rather excessive. But dot he had no choice. Linley. Alphonsus said solemnly. Both because of your four divine beasts clan as well as because of the Lord Prefect, I would definitely help extend your wife's life if I had the ability to. But dot I have to tell. You. Even if I help out, I'll at most be able to extend her life for a day or two. A day or two? Linley was stunned. He had been hoping the extension would be for several years. The longer the better. This sort of soul treatment dot it isn't as simple as you think it is. To treat your wife dot as I just said, because your wife's soul rejected my energy, even her body physically reacted. Alphonsus continued, the soul is a very central part of a person. When treating someone, I have to be extremely, extremely careful. If just the slightest bit of energy spills out, I'll have injured your wife's soul and she will die. I can maintain this sort of peak performance for a short period of time, ensuring that I don't make any mistakes. But if the amount of time I spend in that state is just a bit too long, given how much spiritual energy that takes up, errors will naturally occur. And once an error occurs, your wife will. Alphonsus said apologetically. Linley was silent for a moment. Linley. The Lord Prefect will soon arrive. Perhaps the Lord Prefect will be able to save your wife. Gislason said hurriedly. Linley's eyes lit up. Right. There's still the Lord Prefect. But Alphonsus said, Linley, I already told you to make your preparations. Although I deeply admire the Lord Prefect, to be honest dot I don't believe that the Lord Prefect has the ability to heal her. Mr. Alphonsus. Linley was growing angry. To save your wife, there are only three methods. Alphonsus said. Linley immediately started to listen attentively. The first is to have an expert who has trained to the utmost limits of the edicts of life come. Most likely, his treatment speed will be able to surpass the devouring speed. A person like this will be able to save your wife. But of course, you must understood that if three more months pass and the process reaches the late stages, most likely even the most powerful expert of the edicts of life will be unable to rescue her, Alphonsus said. However, this type of person, who has trained to the utmost limits of the edicts of life, is extremely rare even in the higher plane of life, much less in the infernal realm. 
The second method is to use life type sovereign's might. Devouring speed at this level, considering how powerful life type sovereign's might is, can be quickly cured. Gislason said frantically, our four divine beasts clan does have life type sovereign's might. Right, we have life type sovereign's might. Linley said hurriedly as well. You didn't let me finish. Alphonsus shook his head. Life type sovereign's might is extremely powerful. Naturally, its restorative speed is astonishing. But dot life type sovereign's might is in fact too powerful. There is no way a high head can control it perfectly. I imagine that those of you who have used sovereigns might know that it will leak out, right? Linley was stunned. Right. Sovereigns might was too powerful. The spiritual strength which a high head could exert over it was not enough to perfectly control it. This would cause the user of Sovereign's might to emanate an azure aura or a black aura or some other aura over their body. This was caused by the natural leakage of Sovereign's might. It was said that Sovereign's might could only be used a single time. This was because once a high had used Sovereign's might, there was no way the high had would be able to prevent the Sovereign's might from leaking out and dissipating. Even if he stopped fighting, the Sovereign's Might would still naturally disperse. Even if I used Sovereign's Might to save Delia by delving deep into her soul. If there was the slightest bit of imprecision, Delia's soul would be impacted and would die. To say nothing of the leakage of energy from the Sovereign's Might, Alphonsus said. Remember, to save Delia, there can't be a single hint of leakage of Sovereign's Might, or a single mistake. Linley's face couldn't help but turn ashen. He understood this principle. Sovereign's might was the energy of a sovereign. He had never heard of a high who could control it perfectly, to the point where not a hint was wasted or dispersed. Gislason said, there are indeed high who are capable of controlling sovereign's might so perfectly. According to legend, high who have reached the paragon level are able to perfectly control sovereign's might. Unfortunately, I've never heard of a hired paragon who resides within Indigo Prefecture. Linley couldn't help but laugh bitterly. Mr. Alphonsus, didn't you say there was a third method? Linley immediately asked. Alphonsus said resignedly, the third method is to ask a sovereign to intervene. If a sovereign is willing to intervene, no matter which sovereign, your wife would be easily saved. But Dot will you be able to convince a sovereign to help? Your third method is a waste of words. Bibi said unhappily. But Linny was silent for a long time. Mr. Alphonsus, are there truly no other methods? Linley asked again. Alphonsus nodded with absolute certainty. Given my understanding of the soul, I dare say that I am completely certain that aside from these three methods, there are no other methods available. The first method was to find an expert who had reached the utmost limits of insight into the edicts of life, a supreme expert who vastly surpassed Alphonsus. But where in Indigo Prefecture would they go to find someone like that? The second method was to find someone who was able to perfectly control Sovereign's might, without allowing for any leakage or making any errors. This amount of spiritual control was something which only those legendary paragons were capable of. The third method. The only sovereign which Linley had a connection to was the Redbud Sovereign. But even aside from the question of whether or not she would help out, the amount of time it would take to go from the Bloodridge continent to the Redbud continent was far, far too long. Delia couldn't wait for that long. Everyone. I've troubled you all in recent days. Linley forced out a smile. You can all go back now. There's no need to worry yourselves over my affairs. Mr. Alphonsus, I wish to truly thank you for having hurried such a distance to come save my wife. Gislason, the Vermilion Bird Matriarch, Fuzro, and the others, seeing the look on Linley's face, 
all sighed in their hearts. Linley, we'll leave for now. Gislason and the others wanted to console him, but they didn't know what to say. All of them simply left. Although they all knew that the Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture would arrive soon, after hearing Alphonsus' explanations, they all understood dot that the Lord Prefect probably wouldn't be able to save Delia, unless his spiritual control was able to perfectly control Sovereign's might. But unfortunately, according to legends, only hired paragons were capable of this. Boss. Bibi looked at Linley's forlorn figure. He had the sudden urge to cry. Linley turned to look at Bibi, forcing a smile out. Bibi, you head out as well. Let me accompany Delia by myself. Linley patted Bibi on the shoulders. Bibi made a sound in acknowledgement, nodding repeatedly. And then, Bibi left the room as well. Within the room, the only figures now present were Linley, Delia, and that slumbering Wade, who had no idea what was going on. Linley quietly looked at Delia, countless scenes flashing through his mind. Grief filled his breast, and he couldn't help but raise his head. Heavens! Why must you punish me so? His hoarse voice echoed and reverberated within the silent room. It was filled with regret, anger, grief dot and despair. Two streams of tears fell down from Linley's face. Linley slowly walked to the bed, kneeling in front of it and looking carefully at Delia. He stretched his hand out, gently stroking Delia's face. A hint of a smile appeared on Linley's face as well, a peaceful smile. Delia, I'll accompany you on the final leg of the journey. Never to part dot ever. Time flowed on. In the blink of an eye, many days had passed. Bibi stood outside the room, staring in from outside the window. At this moment, Baruch walked past. Afraid of disturbing Linley, he said softly, Bibi, how is Linley doing right now? Everyone knew Delia's situation, and they all understood that there was most likely no hope for Delia. Only, everyone feared that because of this, Linley would collapse and perhaps even do something which would cause everyone regret and pain. See for yourself, Bibi sighed. There wasn't a hint of a smile on Bibi's face right now. He didn't have any mood to laugh or joke around any longer. Baruch looked in through the window. He saw, within the room. Linley was currently holding Wade, feeding Wade some liquid food. Every so often, Linley would look towards Delia and say softly, Delia, Wade's been very good today. He hasn't caused any fuss at all. Seeing this from outside the window, Baruch couldn't bear to watch any longer. I really hope, Bibi said softly. I really, truly hope, that Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture who is arriving soon will be able to save Delia. He has to. Right. Baruch nodded as well. Right at this moment, a figure suddenly descended from the skies. It was Fuzro. Fuzro said in a soft voice as well. Bibi, Linley, he. Fuzro, you came. A gentle voice rang out. Smiling, Linley walked out of the room, carrying Wade. I came to take Wade out for a walk. Come, Fuzro, you can hold Wade for a while as well. It's been so long since you last came. Wade has missed you. Fuzro, seeing the smile on Linley's face couldn't help but feel stunned. He hadn't expected that at a time like this, Linley would be smiling. But for some reason, he had this feeling dot that Linley's smile caused him to feel even more miserable than a look of grief. All right, I'll hold him. Fuzro immediately walked over. Hug. Wait, seeing Fuzro walked over, immediately reached out with his little hand while saying, hug dot hug. Linley laughed. Wade can say a few simple words already. 
he knows how to say mother. Right at this moment, a figure descended from the skies at high speed. It was Elder Garvey. Elder Garvey flew over, hurriedly saying, Linley, the Lord Prefect has arrived. Linley was stunned. The Lord Prefect came. A hint of color appeared in Linley's lifeless eyes. Although Linley no longer held much hope in the ability of the Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture to save Delia, at least it was worth a try. Right. The four clan leaders and the Grand Elder immediately went to greet him. It'll be a while before he arrives, Elder Garvey explained. The four clan leaders of the four Divine Beasts clan were naturally very arrogant, but they sincerely admired the Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture, admired and respected him. The great kindness this person had shown to their clan, as well as this person's power, was more than enough for them to act this way towards him. Oh, Linley lives right here? A friendly voice rang out. Ten figures descended from the skies. Linley, Fuzro, Bibi, and the others all raised their heads to look. The person flying at the head was the Lord Prefect of Indigo Prefecture, while Gislason and the four clan leaders followed by his side, their attitudes very humble and meek. But Linley just stared fixedly at that figure who was escorted by those four clan leaders, like the moon surrounded by four stars. The person was dressed in a long black robe. His long black hair fluttered in the breeze, and his long black beard hung down to his chest. His eyes were very small, but they looked as lively and energetic as the stars. A hint of a smile was at the corner of his lips, and a very friendly look was on his face. Linley. That person laughed while greeting him. Linley, this is the Lord Prefect. Gislason introduced. But Linley just stared in disbelief. B. Lord Beirut? Grandpa. Bibi called out as well, shocked. He excitedly charged forward, and Beirut opened his mouth and laughed loudly. Ha ha, Bibi. And as he spoke, he drew Bibi into his arms. Grandpa. Bibi called out excitedly once again. Ha ha dot you've missed Grandpa, eh? Beirut laughed very happily. As for Gislason, the Vermilion Bird Matriarch, and the rest of the four clan leaders, as well as the Grand Elder and the other elders, and even Fuzro. They all stared with wide eyes in disbelief at this scene. The Lord Prefect. Grandpa. Looks of utmost amazement were on the faces of Gislason and the others. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the new updates of your favorite audiobooks. Please support the author by buying the original books in the description. Love and Peace. Wind Pay.